Hello, everybody. Welcome to my channel for Sandra's just like get to the point. Like <laughs> <laughs> No, I was just posting the book. Um, we are here to talk about Path of Daggers, which is book eight in the Wheel of Time series by Robert Jordan. Um, this discussion will be quite spoiler. We can put these down. <laughs> Discussion will probably be different covers. A little bit spoilery because we're on book eight. Um, if we even have anything to discuss at all, because I could not really tell you much that happened in this book. But I guess we will start with everybody's non-spoilery thoughts. Starting with Deb. Oh, rating as well. Oh gosh, I should have checked what I rated this. I finished it two weeks ago. Much has faded. Um, but I think it was around a three. It was fine. There were a few things that happened that I remembered, and there was a lot of filler. It was more like a 2.5 kind of a three. So that's where I'm at with it. Sandra? Um, I'm sorry. I, I feel like nothing happens i don't know what to say but you know like you know like when you come back after a season of watching something and you need to check where every character is because you like it's been a year mm -hmm. since you like watched the show that is why this book feel like like you need to check with every character what they're doing but then they don't do anything more like <laughs> we have that check-in and then they don't do anything more it's like the first episode of a season but instead of being that episode we have a whole book you know what i mean so, so yeah, I found some parts a bit fun, but mostly everyone just wanted to have sex with each other for no reason, and then um, nothing happened. And um, yeah, I gave it three though because I like I like the story or wall, but filler. Um, <laughs> uh, the last hundred pages was a five, but the book overall is a very angry 2.5 stars which is a full star less than I have rated any other book in this series I'm just looking at the end because you said the last 100 pages were a 5 and I'm like in my this? edition my edition is much smaller than yours oh my god yeah that's like really small how many pages is it Joe's 516 not counting the glossary Okay, yeah, mine's 570, so it is, like, a little bit shorter. So you're saying, for me, that's, like, 130 pages you're saying with a five-star, and I'm like, where, though? <laughs> Mommy Amberly just doesn't have taste. <laughs> I'm joking. You're saying that as though you have not made... Your holding was hostage here, Sandra, because you love this series. Um, I'm here voluntarily, so I'm pretty sure that makes me the only other host here who does have taste, since this is the Wheel of Time read-along. <laughs> Fine. Bagel also Sorry. said that it was their favorite so far. Everything, well, I mean, not everything, but starting from chapter 25 to the end was like my five star range. I do think for me, the end picked up. I do agree with that. Sorry, Kylie's knocking. Yeah, but that's like kind of saying that like you watch a like 20 episode show and then the last episode 20 is good, but 19 episode sucks. <laughs> You know what oh, I mean? Like, it still doesn't make up for the 19 episodes. I... This one was just fine for me. There were a couple of, like, interesting points. But, like, at this point, I've stopped making spoiler vlogs for the series because I just have, like, one thing to say per book and it's just not really worth it. Like, it's just... Maybe I'll come back after we get to, after book 10, maybe I'll do, like, 11 to the end. But like, I mean, you're not going to post what you have so far well i don't have anything i've got one clip for the last book which is complaining about matt being sexually assaulted and <laughs> nothing really for this one um it was just fine for me i gave it two stars which is what i gave the last one so i would say that they're probably like around the same i thought that the last one was slightly more interesting than this one i also thought the last one was slightly more interesting than this one this mm. this is a. Uh... This is the first book that I would say it's the slog. The slog is slogging. I mean, it started in the last one, and this is really slogging. And I'm sorry to say that the next one is literally the same. <laughs> I gave the class of four stars, and that was subtracting points for what happened to Matt. So I don't agree on the last book, but this one, this is 
this is slog. I didn't even realize actually because this was so like it felt very one note to me. And I feel like I didn't realize that Matt wasn't here until you said that you were annoyed because there's no Matt in this book. I realized no, you're right. Okay, so this this is my rant. I have waited so many books for Matt to meet this daughter of the nine moons that he was gonna marry. We end last book with Matt and the Sean Chan in the same city. And then the only main character we don't have through this entire book is Matt and I am angry and I insist the next book must consist of only bad chapters and I don't want to see anyone else. <laughs> I mean, I would say potentially, but I believe that a lot of people don't like the slog books because of Perrin. So I can guarantee that there's probably going to be some Perrin there, but I'm not sure about Matt. <laughs> yeah, I hate Perrin. Can we go into spoilery things so I can make a comment? Yeah, sure go. Um, so at the end, when Fael was like forcibly taken captive, I feel bad for how much glee I felt in that moment. <laughs> Dude, I would only have felt glee if she actually died. Is it literally yes. just us? not me liking Winter's Heart, except Perrin's storyline? It sucks because I don't. It's not. I, I'm not going to spoil anything, but because because she's taken, there's only one thing he's going to do. Oh yeah, he's just mm. going to chase after. I mean, we all yes. know that. That's... He's not going to do anything else. I'm like, we... <laughs> I'm becoming a, a, a goblin because it's like he's even more annoying than when they're actually together. It's him trying to get her back. That's more annoying. How is that possible? I think my biggest complaint about this specific book in the series is that it, it is smaller. It, I'm pretty sure it's like the smallest one in the series so far. And my complaint isn't all of the stuff that's in there that's unnecessary. It's all of the things he left out. Like we missed, he didn't even bother to write the entire first confrontation between Rand and the Sean Chan when he was battling them outside Abu Dar. Like we just skipped it. We just skipped it. And then at, in Perrin's last little itty bitty part of the final chapter, it was talking about how he'd started taking Elias's uh, advice and he was being calmer to Berylene and yelling at Fael, but we didn't see any of it. No. Yeah, we just had Fael's point of view. She was like, finally, he's acting like a prop of a husband and yelling at me. And I'm like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> But because joy. he had yelled at Berlin and that made her jealous, I'm like, are you, are you okay? She's not. This okay. book is so short that I don't understand why we were leaving things out when we included all of this other stuff, like 400 pages of pointlessness. When compared to his other page counts, it's it's just so short. You had time. You had pages. You could have shown we me something. So much, we spent so much time hearing why she was jealous and why she was unhappy about the fact that he wasn't upset or yelling at her. And I get the cultural thing behind that, but yeah, all that build up, and then he just gets the advice and puts it into action and we're done. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Off it, the whole thing, the three way thing with them just because yeah. it's so present as well. Like, it's, sometimes it's all that Fanny ever talks about is Bella, and it's like, if you hate her, just stop talking about her. Yeah, it's constant. Stop. It's like that, that entire, that's all Perrin's storyline is at this point, is just Fanny I I miss, like, the first few books with Perrin, because then it was more focused on, like, his wolf parts, and, like, him yes! going going yeah. from, like, a blacksmith to a lord, etc. Like, I found those parts of his story so interesting, and now we have Fayil. That's his storyline. Yeah, I but... actually just put, I put the next book on my Our Fantasy Bingo TBR, and I put it in for the dreams prompt, which is essentially any book with dreams. It doesn't have to be magical or anything. And I said, like, Rand has dreams, but I completely forgot that Perrin dreams about wolves all the time because it's been so long since that's been relevant. Well, there's also yeah. like the entire Teleron Riyadh, which literally is the oh entire my God, yeah. dreams. So you forgot oh that part, God. Becca. You are so right. You are so right. But I also feel like that that took up so much of the earlier books, and it's not present that much anymore. Like it used it's to be, like so much of the books was in Tel Tele and Riyadh. Well, I guess those parts is yeah. going to be important later, so that's why he included it. But like now, since we have this slog, like nothing feels relevant right now because we're just slogging. 
It is. So I feel like the way that he can't weave things together very well. It's like this book is about this thing, and then this book is about this thing, and then eventually these two things will meet. But until then, I'm going to write a book about this other thing, <laughs> and it like which, needs to be a bit more simultaneous. Which is kind of ironic, given that it's a book where the magic is about weaving things together. <laughs> <laughs> True. Uh, I was gonna say, what do you guys think of Elaine and Naive? But I didn't do anything. We had Naive being annoyed because she can have sex with Lan, and then we that was the whole, that was everything that happened. I don't think they did anything else. They used the ball, but it was yeah. that in the last book because they no. just said they used it. But did we? They did use it. They used it at the beginning of this book, and that was actually one of the scenes at the beginning of the book that I actually enjoyed. Like before everything went downhill, I thought that was really cool, and especially how. All of the um, Sidar ended up being woven into it too, and I was wondering if them using the bowl and all of that male side of the power, just like being around, is why Rand and the what what you call columns, <laughs> the Ashaman, the Ashaman were having such a hard time controlling their powers when they were fighting the Shan Shan outside of Ebudar. Oh, maybe. It's so global warning. <laughs> I thought that, that was a little bit underwhelming just because of how soon it came in the book compared to how long they spent searching for the ball. So I felt I like kinda... it was very early on, but it was it was it was good. But then I feel like that could have come later on to give more of a build up instead of it happening and then it being like a dip. And then something else happening. Two two books. Books. We've been building up to it for two books. It was time. I just I feel like Robert Jordan knows that there is not a lot going on in these books and that's why they're shorter when he could have combined them and made like a longer book with a little bit more happening. <laughs> I mean, in theory we didn't need naive being annoyed because she can have sex and land. Like we didn't need like fifteen pages with that. We could have just had her being annoyed with sex and land in a bigger book where actually things happened. I guess and being also annoyed. Rand, Elaine, and Min. Was I the ender with him in this one as well, or was it just them two? Well, he wasn't the ender with Elaine. Yeah, he didn't even t make contact with Elaine in this book. It Did was just I, again. They were just talking about it then. Yeah. I thought he, that I'd forgotten that that happened, but no, yeah, because Min told him to go to Elaine, didn't she? Yeah, that's that's when the so bullet happened. I was also thinking, like, Rand's point of view. I still get confused with which city he's in. <laughs> Honestly, he went back to a city now and everyone's annoyed for him leaving the other city and I still don't know which other city we mean. Um, he was and, in you know, now he's in Kyrian. Yeah, but I still like, in my head, I still don't know what means what. <laughs> and I read this book twice, but I was going to say when he was meeting uh, Catherine and how Catherine is written, I know she's supposed to be really cool, but she annoys the shit out of me because I feel like that is Robert Jordan perspective on how a cool woman is and it annoys me <laughs> like a strong independent woman that is Cat Wayne in his eyes in a way and I'm just like Ugh. I feel like she's basically an, just an older version of Nynaeve like she's just gonna go around and like spank your bottom if you're not going to obey her <laughs> like... I feel like this is interesting Emily because for the last books, I think he intended to write one final book, didn't he? But Brandon Sanderson was like, this is too much. And mm. spread it into like two or three. But I so, think people have said that if he actually kept writing them, that it would have been like 20 more books. Like, like it would have been 20 ended. books. Yeah, because he would have just kept slogging. Like he would have just had a little, and then it would literally have been like a 25 book series. Oh dear. I know we were doing when we were doing catch up book club with Zafina. She was like, Oh, I might start Wheel of Time seeing as you're all loving it. And we were like, Are we? <laughs> like, me and Aaron, really? like, Really? <laughs> but yeah, it's um, the slug be slugging. Yeah, I we got so much more of the wind finders in this book, yeah. not just like just like being involved with all of the other groups. And I have to say that I hate them, I hate them so much. I don't understand why all groups of women in these books have to be overbearing and annoying. Well, I mean, was it Rachel who said the she's convinced that yeah, I know no whole heart. I know wholeheartedly believe RJ does not like women. 
Yeah, because they're written in a way that they're supposed to be independent and cool and blah, 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 blah. But he writes them in a way that I don't even know how to describe it. I'm not smart enough for this. But you get what I mean. Someone with bigger brain cells talk. <laughs> what, where are we standing with Varen now? Because we had that we had another scene with her towards the beginning of the book where like I, I feel like I'm leaning even more towards the fact that she's black Aja now, but I'm still not sure. I still don't know. We keep going back and forth. It seems like it. It seems like it, but it could be a misdirect. I don't That's the what only about- history of these books. The only thing that I'm like desperate to find out is is where in Black Aja. What about uh, was it Shiriam when like Egwene was plotting stuff? Someone came into Shiriam and said that she was supposed to keep an update on what Egwene was doing. She's definitely. I don't. I don't think she's Black Aja. I think she's being controlled by someone who is Black Aja inside of the Rebel Aes Sedai forces. Who is that? She's the keeper. To she's Egwene. Act- yeah, she's acting as Egwene's keeper. Oh, Sherian? Sh- 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 Sherian? Sh- that was Sherian. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think, I thought it was really interesting that we used so long time on, like, Egwene manipulating the hall. Like, so much time was spent on that. I was just like, literally, are we going to get on with this? And then the whole thing that we concluded with was that she declared war on Elida. And I was like, mm-hmm. are we not already at war? We are marching an army to the White Tower. What do you mean we are declaring that war happens. on Elida? <laughs> That happens right at the end, doesn't it? And it's like very dramatic. Well, well, yeah. well, I mean, they they march through the portal right at the very end, but they declare mm. war like more towards the middle of the book, and then we just kind of don't see them again. But, like, I like seeing Egwene like growing into her role as the Armalan seat, and I enjoy that. But I was just it was just so funny to me that she was just like plotting all of this to declare war, and I was like, Are we not a war before? before this but okay we need to do it officially and actually got all the power because of it but still yeah, yeah. That, one, I, that one was pretty cool i still really like the things with the amelin seat that isn't a gwen what is she called elida elida and her keeper i still oh, love yeah. yeah i i really i'm enjoy i enjoyed the bits we got in the last hundred pages where they finally followed up on the investigation that Elida started of the Black Aja in the White Tower. Mm-hmm. Oh, and I then we had the... Because we have so many um, of the Aes Sedai now, all like females that can channel. I wish that there weren't quite so many of them because I want to be invested in rooting out the Black Aja. But like when we find out who the Black Aja are, because there's so many of them and I can't keep all of them straight, I'm like, okay, cool. Like I feel like it could be so much more impactful. Um, and that is still like the politics of the Aes Sedai, especially the White Tower side. I'm not feeling it as much with the Egwene stuff because it doesn't feel as like, you know, like magic schooly as it did at the beginning. But I like all of the stuff like the politics that are still happening in the tower. And I'm hoping that when they like Egwene eventually, which I'm assuming they will eventually be in the tower, that it goes a little bit more in that direction. So I think still my favorite parts of the books, especially with the plot not progressing the fastest right now, it's the stuff that's happening in the White Tower. I can't wait for you to read the prequel. What I thought is the prequel about Lan. Lan and, Lan and Moraine. 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 And they are in the White Tower. Yeah. I thought that the prequel was about Lan being from the place that he's from and how that was destroyed. No, this is after it was destroyed. He's like okay. own. I just assumed because Lan went there and then he was all mysterious and I knew that the prequel was about him, so I thought that's what it was about. <laughs> it would it would have been cool as well. Mm. We also got uh Savannah and then like they had like one as died with torturing and then they made her swear on the outrod and that's all I remember. My point is that, that they have kind of pissed at Savannah, they don't want her to have as much power anymore, and I was like Interesting. That's with the uh, Shadow Ail. Shadow Ail? That's not what they're called. Shido. Is it? Shido. I said Shadow. I mean, similar. Shadow, Shido, same shit. When do we read the prequel? After Isn't book, it after book okay. 10? Yeah. After 10. When could you read it? So if I wanted to, could I read the prequel now? Like it doesn't spoil anything. I yeah. don't remember anymore. It was the only we, book we, I 
said, and that was like 15 years ago. Because I'm interested to see what the relevance of what the relevance is of it reading it after book 10 specifically. I think it was just that was when it was published. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, so like, uh, but like in theory, we could read it now, but um. Mm-hmm. I mean, we would have a pause from the slog, but then we need to go back to the slogging. I know. It feels time. better yeah. in like a, a, a... Well, I'm assuming that it's good. I'm trying to find it now to see what the average rating on it is. I really but, enjoyed it. Uh, it would be nice as a reward. It's like my second favourite, I think. And I agree. Most of the favorite. Is it the last one? No, my favourite is, I think, The Gathering Storm. That was incredible. Okay. Is that 11? I think... I think so. I don't remember in my mind. I don't have. The average rate is 4.06 on New Spring. When I was reading these, I didn't know there was something called a slog. I was like, I was so confused of why nothing was happening. <laughs> I was like, what is going on? Why is nothing happening? And I was reading Winter's Heart, which is the next one. I was just like, this is just the same as the last one. What is going on? I was so upset. <laughs> Now at least I'm prepared for it. But like I didn't even know that the slog was a thing until I was like, oh. So this one, in terms of the series as a whole, is pretty lowly rated. It's got 3.93 average rating, um, which is only very slightly less than New Spring, which is why I was looking because New Spring is actually quite a low rating um, compared to the rest. But the next one, book nine, is even lower with a 3.2. Oh, wait, no. Slightly more with a 3.97 and then book 10 is 3.79. Apparently I gave book 10 two stars. Don't know why. Oof. <laughs> and then with book 11, it goes back up to 4.19. Can we yeah, brief book on the Raken riders we got to see at the beginning when they were attacking mm-hmm. Evidar? Because I don't know, like, that entire, like, scene, I just got such Throne of Glass vibes from... Yeah. I'm really happy that we have the Sean Chan back because I find them very interesting. And I kind of want to know the evolution of their origins from Arthur Hawkwing's army to now. I agree. They're my favorite. Do we find that out, Sandra, at some point? Like, does he really get into their backstory at some point later in the series? Of the Jean Jean, I don't yeah. even say it. <laughs> uh, maybe a bit more than now, but I don't remember like exactly. I kind of don't expect us to get all the answers we would want because, you know, <laughs> that's where we're at. The highest rated book is book 12, 13, and 14 are the highest rated. Like, it's the culmination. Oh, because it's Brandon Sanderson, right? Yeah. Yes, because it's Brandon Sanderson, and he he like he just takes everything and be like, Whoop! it's really. And perfect. also, you weeded out all the people who are giving up on the series at that point, so you really got the people who have invested a lot of time and it's true. Want, but they made it through eight, nine, and ten, which are the lowest. Because that's the slog. Yes. <laughs> oh, you could read the prequel after book five if you wanted to. Cool. Hmm. Does, anyone have, like... hmm? Does anyone have any theories about who this Moradin person is that the Dark Lord is giving all of this favor to? Because I mean, no. he now has control over Mokidian and what? Semarog? As well as these other mysterious people the Dark Lord resurrected that I, I, I don't know if I'm supposed to understand who those are, but I don't understand who those are. This is interesting because I never thought to think why he's called the Dragon Reborn. I thought it was because he was born on dra- the Dragon Mount Mountain that was created like from <laughs> Aaron dying or what, whatever he did. Is he always born there or is it just Rand that was born there? Because I, I thought, thought it was because was the, the next dragon would be born on the dragon moon, and that was Rand. I, I thought it was because Lucerin, who was the original dragon, made a dragon mount. Yeah, I thought it was too. Oh, maybe because I don't think they've but, always been called the dragon. I think Lucerin was the dragon, and then 
uh, Rand is the dragon reborn. So is Lutharin the first dragon, or were the dragons before him? I think, I don't know. I'm sure there were more, given that it's, like, the entire basis of is yeah. this keeps repeating itself. But I I don't know if he's the first one to be called the dragon. Oh, Lutharin was the dragon and Rand is reborn. Yeah. Okay. I think I think he was the one who specifically had that title. I'm intrigued about the other ones then. Like, why? Because, I don't know, the dragon reborn, to me, implied that he's constantly reborn, which he is. But I thought that was, like, the official title throughout all of the ages, not just this one. Rand's extra special. That's why we have 15 books about him. Oh, yeah. <laughs> extra, extra special bread. I did like what? when um, Cad's Cad Swain, I don't know how you pronounce it, she kind of knocked him down a notch. She said something about, you know, when I, with all I've been hearing about you, I expected peals of thunder and trumpets from the heavens. And no, you're just you. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's what we've been saying all along. <laughs> just a little broth. No. I can't stand her. I was really shocked when Soraleo went and just like handed her, here, this is how you travel. <laughs> mm -hmm. What would you what would you guys do if you were a dragon reborn? What would I do? Yes. Ooh, I'd, be, I'd, I'd be dead like day one before they even figured out who I was. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that is actually fair. <laughs> no more like how would you unite these people? <laughs> oh. I would get myself not three wives, I would have at least ten. <laughs> You would have at least ten. Damn. Yeah, I would have I no wives. I'd just like hella party across the country. So really what I'm hearing is we'd all be screwed. Yeah. <laughs> because no one's I, focusing on saving the world there either. You know, like, yeah, he's Severan. So like stuff happens to like around him. So I would use my Severan powers to win the lottery and then I would be rich and then I would chill. I okay, mean, but I, what's the point of being rich if the Dark Lord is coming? At least I'll be drunk so I won't notice it's happening. I at least I will be reading all the books under the pretense of trying to figure out what I'm supposed to do, but really just be hiding in the library. <laughs> okay, I think Rand has to have a connection to the Rackens because the Aes Sedai Gaiden is, is it Gaiden? Gaishin? Gaiden? I don't know. Um, Bond really makes me think of dragon slash dragon rider bonds. Potentially. Yes, yeah, Sandra, what if the pattern doesn't want you to be rich? Then I'm be as poor as I am now, so no difference. <laughs> oh. uh, I was, okay. was going to yeah. ask how happy she was, because I think I literally squealed out loud when he came back onto the page. And I, I, I want all of the explanations to what he's now done to two of those I said I women. <laughs> I am in this for Logan. I've been in this for Logan since the beginning for no reason that anybody knows, least of all me, but I'm a big Logan, Logan fan. So you, you want Logan, and I want Lan, and he was not in this book at all. Logan was mentioned in one scene. Lan was in this book, wasn't he? Didn't he come to... Lan was there for like four seconds, and he was just like, who? He and came over. he was like, I want to have sex, and that was the whole scene. He came over, he told someone to do something. Or did he tell somebody else to tell my niece? Was it one scene? Like one scene. He did he tell there. someone to tell my niece to come quickly? Yes. And she was like, and bitch, I wish I could come quickly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, no, I, I remember Lan being there. Briefly. <laughs> yeah, he was there in one scene, like again. And then I mean, no, that Amelie wants smart. So who do you want, Dab? I couldn't tell you at this point. No, it's, it's, I'm it's, just it's, along for the ride. You know, I really want that. Sorry. Min had a vision of I said I taking an Asherman as a water. Interested in that plot when it happens. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just you remembered did? something. No, I just remembered something. But now, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't really like the Asherman or like the, the male channelers being taken as warders because it feels they should be equal and it doesn't feel like equality it feels like subservience 
so I'm like, is there a potential that the Aes Sedai, and have they always been called Ashaman or is it run specific ones that are called Ashaman? It's those specific ones that are called Ashman. Those specific ones. Okay, so the male ice dies. I'm wondering what their relationship was like in history because they used to have to, when they make the circles, there's like an equivalent amount of women to men, isn't there? And I'm wondering if there was something similar to like a water bond for men and women that channel that isn't subservience like it is with waters. That's, that's, I mean, that's an interesting question. I would hope so because I really don't want to see them becoming. I I don't think Robert Jordan would do that. I don't think he would make a group of men just completely subservient to women. Yeah. Mm. Wouldn't that have a negative reflection on the Aes Sedai as well if the waters? Or is it only the other way around? So if the men went crazy and died while they were waters to Aes Sedai, would that affect the Aes Sedai, or is it only the Aes Sedai that affect the waters? And I mean, we've seen multiple examples of Aes Sedai mourning their warders. Oh, yeah. I don't think I don't think it's quite as intense where you we've seen the warders tend to kill themselves, where the Aes Sedai mourn for a really long time and really intensely, but I don't mm. think had it said that they killed themselves no no if someone said i think in this book that like when your ass die dies the water usually just dies because they can't survive it mm-hmm. and they were talking about how lan is like still going because like yeah obviously because his his mom got transferred to the random other ass die but that like he's still like that's the only reason he survived but is that because the waters don't channel or is it because of the bond would it be different if the man that's the water channels i always thought it was the bond because i think they've mentioned that the longer the water and the ice die is bonded the harder it is Mm -hmm. that makes sense the Aes Sedai, the, no, the Ashermen are also taking Aes Sedai waters, I think. At least that's what I got from the bit with Logan. Uh, what do you guys think about Swan being in love with Gareth Brynn? I, I mean, that, that. we've done that for like three books already. I mean... Yeah, but that was like on the page and she was like... Oh, 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 oh. I love how shook she is by it. <laughs> yeah. He's my favourite. Yeah. I need to clean his shirts and his shoes. <laughs> That's how you show you'd love someone. Clean your shirts. I thought and that really. I thought that Gareth Bryn was the one that loves Elaine's mom, whose name I can't remember. Was. Moraine. He was. So yeah, I he was. Yeah. But then she threw him off because of uh, Gabriel. And he yes, got- I thought with like with the recent plot line of them, I thought they were gonna get back together. No, because Moraine had a thing with her guard that is much younger than her, and then they had a moment in this see in this book where he kissed her eyelids, and she almost came in her pants, and then he left her, like <laughs> not actually left her, but he he went off, like he kissed her eyelids, and she was like shaking. I was like, girl, just go and take a wank or something, chill. <laughs> what I is true? Moraine said it as he kissed the where. I think when Ashman are becoming a thing, they said that some of them made their wives as waters. Oh, okay. Also interesting. But I think some of the Ashman did force us to die as their waters in this book. That's what happened in the Logans. Yeah, that's what Bagel said. Yeah, I, 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 it had a weird vibe to it, though, because it was, I mean, have we seen where Aes Sedai can completely control their warders? Because he, like, after he kissed her, he was, like, completely controlling her and making her obedient and, like, calm. Which mm-hmm. seems different. That's kind of like the Shan Chan stuff. With the Damani on the leashes. That's why it didn't scream like water bond the way that the other. Because I mean, if if the Aes Sedai could do that, then Alana wouldn't have such a hard time with Rand. If this is part of the wedding ceremony, does that mean that Logan also has multiple wives now? Because I just can't get behind it. Uh, 
it's just not great. And then, yeah, you also have, where is it, Elaine and Avienda made their relationship true in this book. I just don't care because, like, they're only doing it so they can all bang around. That's what I mean. Everyone just wants to bang. But it's also so uh, frustrating because they're all like, it's like Robert Jordan's really trying to sell us of the the conflicting feelings of like, oh, I want Rand, but like if I want him, I have to share him. I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. While we're talking about the Ashaman, um, at the end there, um, who do you think was actually responsible for trying to blow up Rand? Mm. <laughs> That's an interesting question. Do you have a theory? I, I mean, I believe that Deshiva and the other ones who attacked him after, like when he mm. saw them, I believe they were part of it. I'm just not entirely buying that Mazram Taim had nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. I think that he is currently making a lot of enemies. And I think that tensions are rising amongst the people that follow him. But then he also has plenty of enemies outside of that. So I feel like there is a long list of people that could have potentially done it. I mean, but I've I do feel like it's someone close to home. <laughs> I've been waiting and waiting and waiting for Mazroom Taim to betray him. So that was my first, like, oh, is this the moment? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that would but just I feel happen. like it's, I feel like we don't, I, 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 I agree with you, but I feel like it's like really in a way that we met Mazroom Taim like two times or something. And then it's like, we just expected him to be the bad guy all along. And I just feel like we haven't like explored why he needs to be the bad guy. He just like hated him from the get go. And I'm like, why? I don't know. Like he never respected Rand from the second he met him, and I'm like, I want this to be explained better, but we, I guess, just hate each other. Okay. I think a number of them are mad about every day, including Shiva. But I agree. I think is it time? Kind of new and just let them do it. It did seem to me. I kind of agree with this. It didn't seem like he planned it necessarily. More that he kind of just let it happen. He really. To be honest, I would do the same. He really only seems surprised that Rand mentioned Deshiva was part of it. Mm. Oh. You okay, Sandra? No, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm digesting your life. <laughs> oh. Do you, do you know who did it? Do you remember who did it, Sandra? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was like, why are you shocked? I had so much um, mental capacity left while reading for most of this book that I've already been planning out like the layouts for my tracking spreadsheets for when I reread to like how I'm going to keep track of all of the information <laughs> characters. <laughs> Have you been listening to the audiobooks or reading them physically? This one, I couldn't get the audiobook from my library before because I was a numbskull who forgot to put in the reservation two months ago. Um, so I had to read this one without the audiobooks. Normally, I do both. I read along okay. while I listen. Um, so this one, which probably also explains why this one took me three weeks to get through. Because if it was just a slog on audio, I still could have gotten through it in like a week. Damn. I feel like my because I started it early, so I finished it a week ago. But now that we're at the live show, I'm like, that wasn't a good idea because I don't remember it as much as I remember the other ones because I finished them normally like the day before. I finished this yesterday and I had six hours left of the audio and I'm like, shit. So I had to I, listen all yesterday as if I didn't have other stuff to do. I finished 20 minutes before we started. So Damn. There's always one that's cutting it that fine. I finished two weeks ago and that was a bad idea. I should have known to pace myself better. <laughs> Last time I finished a full month before we had the live show. I feel like I need to revisit the glossary and like properly revisit some of the characters. It's, it's um, not. Cool. Oh, is it not? Now you have time. There's like nothing that's happening anyway. Unless I feel you're like not a classic person I in these, there should be. But the glossary. Yes, there's like glossary. There's a glossary, but it's only 
concerning specific terms mentioned in this book. It's not like it doesn't have like a but, full down of all the characters and everything that you'd want to know. There's there's um, that app, you know, there's the one someone recommended, one of the first live oh, shows. Where you can go into like the certain book and then you can press oh, really? the character and you can see what they're doing so far in that book you're in. Oh, that would be helpful. Oh, uh, I it's a little bit of recap, but called, I realized quickly it's spoilery because it's their character yeah, it's called, for all the time. <laughs> it's called Wheel of Time. So I can press like Path of Daggers and then it's like literally all the characters. Oh, sorry. Oh, God. I just went out of that. It's like all of the characters. And then you can see how far, like, what they're doing to this book. Like, so you don't... So, like, I could go on that and look at characters and what they did in this book. And then I... No, like, to up to this book. Oh, so it tells you everything. Oh, that's Yeah, I I can check Matt. I would just check Matt right now. Yeah, so, like, this is Matt Matt right now, up to this book, kind of. It's like summarized what he's doing, and then you can also check like, all the characters a lot because that's quite short for Matt, who was a main character. Yeah, no, like literally, it is a summary, summary. But and then it's character list in general, so you can like if you meet a character you don't know who is, you can just search them up in the list, and then you don't get spoiled because it's just up to that book because we go into each individual book. So if I is it up to that book, so it doesn't include Path of Daggers if you're on Path of Daggers, yeah. or does it include Path of Daggers? That's a really good point. I need. I can check Matt. Well, for Matt, that. it's not going to show oh, anything. Oh wait. Oh, who's another character? Though? Karen. Fail. Fail, because she'll get kidnapped at the end if it includes. Fail. Oh, I can't spell it. F A. I. I can't still not spell it. Fail. <laughs> what did you say? F A I L E. It's L L E, isn't it? No, it's one L. Oh. You guys are not helping. <laughs> I can literally not understand the love. Now, how about right Perrin? Now. Perrin's easier to spell, and he has. Okay, his right, wife okay. Perrin, Perrin, Perrin. <laughs> yeah, yes. well, basically, no, so name. this was oh, the book me. before. Because it says Perrin went to. G- G- Gilly John, I can't even say that either. To see yeah. if he could tame Masima, that is what he was doing in his book. So this is, it's not doesn't include the book you are in, so you don't get spoiled okay. for your book you are in. So I'm on Path of Daggers right now. So if I want to know what they were doing in Path of Daggers, I need to go to the next book. Uh, parent wife. Is, is it the Wheel of Time Compendium unofficial? Uh, this. This is a good point. Because there's another one called Wheel of Time Reader, but that one's three ninety nine. Well, why is it? I can't see the name of that. Like, I can only see Wheel of Time. I it looks like... Yeah, it's that, that one. It's that yeah. one. Because yes. then there's also that one, which is three ninety nine. Oh, no. I didn't pay for this. Are you crazy? But I haven't actually we used the map on this time. series. I, well, I put who is it Emily asking? Look, I, I'm even in the Wheel of Time Discord because I can share it now if I am. <laughs> which one? Yeah, it's that one. So I checked uh I checked Winter's Heart, which is obviously the next one, and I checked Fail. And it says the last thing. She left with the parent to Gilly down to find Masima, and mm-hmm. while he was away, her party was ambushed by the Shadow Ail, and she was taken Gashan by them. And that's the last thing that happened to her in okay. Path of Daggers. So like you need to go. Because if you're reading Winter's Heart and you're like, who the fuck is Fail? You search for Fail and then you see what you did last, kind of. Cool. I've downloaded yeah. it. Me yes. too. I'm uh, more upset about the fact that Morgase got kidnapped by the Shadow than the fact that Fail got kidnapped by the Shadow. I feel just bad for Morgase in general because she's been kidnapped by everybody at this point. <laughs> it really has. <laughs> And she's like, she's a badass as well, so I'm not sure how it's happening. Oh my god, look at there's just too many characters. Why? We could search them on the top. I know, but like if I forgot who everyone was, damn, it's gonna take me like three months to just figure everyone out. But not some of them probably not that important. Yes, it's like Angar, and I'm like, who is Angar? Oh, he's a steady eyed scout with a fast horse. 
<laughs> like, like, why is he even in here if he's irrelevant? <laughs> because they probably did every character so that people literally can search for every character. One so of you select the book you're reading right thing. now, right? So that like you don't get spoiled for the book you're reading. It's pretty smart. Someone told me this about this app like in one of the first live shows we had. But now it's that like one and a half year ago. So I guess what people don't remember. That person also might not even be with us anymore. So no, they're probably I, oh, no, oh my god, I was gonna say the past, but I didn't mean like died. I'm not like they <laughs> want to do something else probably with their lives. Oh my god. It really is a never ending list of characters in the next book. Truly. Uh, I reached the bottom. So you said it didn't include the book, right? So when I'm looking, I should be looking at the next book, Winter's Heart, not Path of Yeah, because it says select the book you're reading now. Okay. So you should select Winter's Heart because that's the one you're reading now, right? Well, not yet, thankfully. No, but like that's the one you're going to read. So you have already read Path of Daggers. Then when you're, then you're up to date for everything. Let kind me of. search file. And it should say at the end that she's kidnapped. Yeah, that's what I just said. Oh my God. It, you are it also is alphabetical except for two names or two entities names i'm not even sure who they are oh no wait one's yeah one are at the bottom that are not i do really like how like brief this is because it's literally like yeah to like it's a summary it, well it would be annoying if you have to read like 14 pages about it yeah i know but i thought it was going to be like wikipedia where it is like 12 <laughs> paragraphs or like when I do a recap of Present City and it's like 12 pages front and back. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I'm glad we have that. That's great. Is there anybody in the chat who wants us to cover anything specifically? Because I truly have nothing really to talk about in this one. I've gone through all my notes now, so. I think I don't want to do it while we're in the slog. But at some point, I've noticed over the last couple of books that I'm getting a little bit derailed and I need to focus a little bit more, but I don't want to do it in the slog because it'll be boring. Like, I won't want to take more time to read them, to, like, read them properly. But I, I need to do it and I need to, like, with the app and, like, actually take notes and stuff. I think you're doing fine. I'm back on track and get reacquainted with some of the side characters that have pretty much just become prominent in the last, like, two books. I mean, knowing Warby Jordan, they're gonna be not relevant in the next two books, so I understand. Like, like, you forget all about characters. Them. I'll catch up, and all of the characters in the next book won't be in the book after, and I'm like, great, well, that was pointless. Uh, I think you're doing fine. I <laughs> also... No, go ahead. Emily, I got everything out. Dab, do you have stuff? Let's go. I just... The only other thing I flagged was the Calendar, which is the weapon, right? That they had that they discovered that it's tainted, but only if men are using it. They need they need the women, which again is this weird kind of thing where, yes, his yeah. his view on the women is questionable at times. But then if they incorporate the women into using this tainted weapon, then it's fine. But it's, so it was just interesting how kind of that discussion just, came about it's just convenient though because he needs oh, absolutely he needs two women to operate it properly and he's got avienda and elaine as two of his three wives who can channel so two of right. his three wives sorry i just thought so <laughs> ridiculous i'm sorry <laughs> i mean very true but i was also thinking i didn't i didn't remember him going to get the weapon isn't wasn't that in the stone of tear when did they go there sent, i don't remember someone else to get it and it like one of the Ashman, and when the Ashman got super pissed because Rand didn't fully explain all of the traps that he had placed. Oh, yeah. I remember him getting pissed now. I didn't. I was just like, where did he get this word from? Did he just show it out out of his ass? Like, what is going on? I thought I was in the tear because he had warded it. He had no. Narisha get the weapon. Was that why Narisha was so pissed? Cad Swain directly states that it is the weapon that's the problem, not the male half of the power. So do they need the women to wield it? Because it doesn't seem like Robert George is the kind of guy that would let a woman wield a sword. Yes, it's Cad Swain that it's like it's broken, like it doesn't work properly unless mm -hmm. there's two women to channel with the man. Okay. Do you guys and is think that why he kind of went crazy when he was trying to use it at one point? 
that in the make- battle he wound up taking out of his own people at the same time as he was taking out the enemy and it was a mess basically <laughs> Yeah, because she made a comment about he how he was lucky to make it through through once unscathed, and who mm. knows what horrors would happen if he did it again. But he'd right. already been right. all his own people. Yeah, I just realized that I've started rereading Stormlight, so I'm going to be reading Wheel of Time and Stormlight at the same time in June. Oh. And you're yeah. reading First Law. Yeah, but that's not at the same. So like, I'm reading a Stormlight book every month. I'm not reading. Like, I'm alternating between Wheel of Time and Joe Abercrombie, but I will be reading Stormlight and Wheel of Time at the same time. And obviously, like, Sanderson's super inspired by Wheel of Time, and Stormlight is the one that he's most inspired by it, I feel. You know, so don't it? That they just talk a bit. all the connections of everything that inspired Brandon Sanderson when he was writing Stormlight. You can just see it all in real time. Mm, that will sustain me. Yeah, I don't think I could do both of those at once because I like listening to the audio and you've got overlapping narrators also. <laughs> yeah, I'm not listening to the audio for Storm Light because I just can't handle that. I, I have to for this one or two because I can't get through it any other way, but I can't listen to two, the same narrator for two big series. Yeah. I'll just start getting confused because I'll be coming into these live shows like, oh yeah, do you remember when Adolin, like killed <laughs> Varen? And you'll be like, what? <laughs> Pulling out our app, looking up Adolin. Wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, what's Adolin done? I, I <laughs> kind of do that not this month, but last month when I was to Wheel of Time and did listen to Stormlight as well. And I was just like, I kept forgetting which book I was in. I think as well, because I associate narrators with characters like um, the Red Rising narrator will always just be Darrow to me. So I'll just, I will literally forget while I'm listening to like Stormlight and think that I'm listening to Wheel of Time. But in the later books in uh, Red Rising, when uh, there's more point of views, is it still the same dude for all of them, or do they have more Um, narrators? He's always Darrow, but in books four and five, it's multicast, like it's full cast, and then everyone complains, so in book six, it's just him again, but he, you can't tell that it's just one guy. Well, why did people complain? Um, Because, like, the one, there's one perspective in book four and five that the narrator was really bad for he's just super bland so then they changed it for book five but then they also didn't have the same narrator for book four and five for one of the female characters so it just wasn't consistent and then like some of them were shit so they just got the same guy to do all of the perspectives but he's so good that you can't tell it's him well so they removed all he read at them no so it's just book six that he does all of it okay but i have read four and five as so well but i I read all of them physically, but I'm considering the audios because I kind of hated the rest of the series. I wonder if I liked it more if I listened to them. It's so I'm good. Sorry. I, I'm sorry. I, I gave the first one four, right? And then the rest is like one and two. So I'm considering rereading. I've been on the wait list for the Morningstar audiobook since our last live show two months ago. Oh my god. That's why I forgot Wheel of Time. No, I'm reading I, I didn't book forget five five next time. week. So. I'm excited for that one. Which one are you doing, Dev? Uh, book five. Oh, okay. Dark the, age. Age. the Age Truly Do Be Dark. Yes. So I started... I'm excited and scared. <laughs> I started 32nd in line, and I'm now 18th in line. Oh, my God. I just checked the uh, Red Rising. They have them all on Everand, or a lot of them, at least. Mm-hmm. All of them, apart from the newest one, are on there. Which is a nice because on Audible, I own a bunch of books that I'll probably never reread, but then I would reread Red Rising, but I don't own them because they're on Everend. I think I might do that for. No, I don't want the dramatized adaption. What is this? Sorry. Yeah, I'd go with the original because the dramatized, you have to listen to it slower or else it. Oh, yeah, no, no. Yeah, because the sound effects and stuff will get all messed up if you speed it up in the music. But yeah. do I want to reread them now and I just read them? Yes. I would reread them forever and cry. Unless you give them one and two stars again, and then we never want to hear from you <laughs> about them. <laughs> well, I was actually going to say something about Wheel of Time. <laughs> about Wheel of Time, but I forgot what it was. Oh, God. Yes, I remember now, like uh, to get back. Uh, have you guys thought about that? Like, all of Rand's wife are very special. Like he has a daughter heir, a girl that can like read people's futures. 
I mean, Avianda's gets the least special. Just the fact that he's just Aiel and people, I like, kind of don't know a lot about Aiel, I guess. I feel like he's like... just there to mix the two cultures because he is technically Aiel, but he's been raised yeah. as not Aiel. I f- I was just thinking if it would have been interesting if like one of his wives was just like a commoner, <laughs> or if that would have been more boring. I feel like it's uh, all of the special women like are his wives because he's so special and shiny and he has all like the best women and it's just that's why it would be interesting if he had one wife that was not so special well maybe, maybe in the future he'll have more maybe he'll just get get a couple more or sandra just spoiled us to the fact that he only gets three wives <laughs> i mean three is already too too many three is already three too many because he's not a, he's not a sexy guy but he's even right. if like even if like he was going to have three wives, the thing that annoys me the most is uh, just that they saw him once and I was like, we're going to get married. Like, there was just... Whatever. No, I also yeah. thought about a lot how like the women are written in this book. I wonder if this was released today, not like back in time, if it would have been received in a different way or if they would have been written in a different way. Um, Both, I'm sure. Are they setting up, because I haven't seen season two of the show, are they setting up three wives in the show or are they going to change that? I haven't seen season two either. I don't think they've gone into it yet in the show. But I, I mean, don't, I, I, I just wonder if they're going to change it. Probably since it's PG-13, right? But it feels like such a key part of the thing. Like There's so much in these books that is about his three wives. I feel like it would be almost weird to change it because, I mean, I'm not a supporter of Three Wives except for myself, but like, <laughs> but like, uh, Rand is I the feel like that was literally if... like a sound bite from an interview with Rand. Like, I'm not supportive of Three Wives unless with myself. <laughs> but I was just going to say that if they did it in short, this is more like if we are in modern days compared to when this was written, they could have made it into more of a fee- that like feels like an actual poly relationship than just him getting Three Wives. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, if they make it more into actual, more equal part of the relationship and make them actually think that they actually all want to be together and the whole first sister shit thing, I feel like it could work. But it was just like they see him and I'm like, yeah, let's just all get married. It just done. It doesn't appeal. But yeah, I just meant in general how women are written in this. Mm-hmm. It's just like I wonder if a lot of that could have been changed today if it was published today. Well, I think the warbling is great, it, didn't they? So that there was a chance that Nynaeve or Elaine, or not Elaine, or Gwen would be the dragon. Oh, there wasn't so actually a chance because it was always going to be Rand, but they <laughs> introduced it in a way where it was possible that one of them could have been the dragon. They did, yeah, yeah. But, but I also, when I was watching the show, I was like, I know that so many changes, but then I liked some parts a lot, but then other parts, like Perrin having a wife. <laughs> yeah that was pointless maybe Ram- though they'll use that to build a really compelling relationship with Fael where she kind of like helps him heal from that but it yeah. doesn't make any sense because he's already a sad boy just because he is he didn't need his wife to die for that to happen do you think they can cast me as Fael because oh. she's very annoying and I'm also very annoying so I feel like I could play Fael in the show <laughs> Maybe she is Fael, and that was them being like, we hit Fael, there will be no Fael. Uh, <laughs> she's going to come, and I'm going to hate her from the get-go. I think they should cast me as Fael. Why? So you can hate yourself? Yes, I already do, so it's not going to be much difference. You know? <laughs> well, I feel like there's enough in the book where he's writing things that could be taken in kind of a feminist way like the women having the power and the women are needed for the men to do what they need to do but like the show could maybe change the tone of it to make it more empowering for the female characters where jordan's is a little suspect more yeah yeah i feel like the thing about this is that there are plenty of women in it so it's not very hard for the show to change it a little bit so that it's less sexist it's yeah. not like they have to make characters that would have been men women because there's already plenty of women there. I also feel like this is a series where certain guys would be like, this is really feminist. Read this because bad as women. But then as actually women, you read it and you're like, okay. Hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? I know what he's trying to do, okay? He tried his best. Or maybe, I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe you just heard it is three wife fantasy. To be honest, I would do the same. 
Okay, do we have any... You wanted 10. (laughs) Yeah, that's true. You did want 10. I mean, if they're all, like... I wouldn't mind being together with Min, Elaine, and Avianda, as long as Ran is not involved. You know? I'm not a fan of Avianda. Like, they're all great women until they're in the presence of Rans. Or oh, until, they think about Ran until they, they know lose him. all personality <laughs> except for I love Rand. I love that. That was the that was like actually great. They're all great except when they're in Rand. Oh. Which is their main point is Rand. Which is like what they do like 50% of the time, 80% of the time. Okay. That's what I got. Nothing else happened. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Life and Sandra are always great. Okay, we will be back in June on Sandra's channel for Winter's Heart. How big is it, Sandra? It is, is one hundred million pages. I would not. Oh, it's be longer than this one. It's it five ninety two. Like one hundred million pages. <laughs> it's five ninety two. So a bit longer than this. Wasn't this five seventy? I don't know. Five seventy, man. Yeah, so this is 592, so it's a whole of 22 pages longer. I think Will Amberly survive? Who knows? Because it's Stay shorter. I, hey, as long as Matt is on the page, I will probably go back to being a four and five star. And I'm... I'm going to look I'm, for Matt's name for you. Oh, I'm look! About this. <laughs> look, look, listen. Matt attempted to make... So he's there. That was all I wrote. He's there. There's at least one page. There's at least one page. Yeah, where I really he is. will be happy about. I am. I'm. I'm actually really upset that he's become like my favorite character. Like you don't understand the torture of wanting to see so much of a man who shares a name with your ex. Oh, <laughs> wait. Which ex are we talking about? Well, well, you said that so you know them. Well, yeah, but well, like. It can Wait, be different. like X when you were nine, <laughs> like the X when you when you were in kindergarten, or like the X you met last year. Like it could be any X. My most recent X that I wasted four years of my life on, and now like I never realized how common of a name Matt is until it is literally everywhere. It drives me nuts. <laughs> Everyone should just change their names. It would be the only respectful thing to do. You could take like a race and just race Matt and then just put in another name. And it's the only kind of standard name off the top of my head in the book. <laughs> like that you run across in everyday life. <laughs> but it's short for but Matt. It's Matt but it's still. <laughs> True. <laughs> Nobody else has normal nicknames. And then you just got Matt. <laughs> Have you ever met? Um, yeah, I mean, doesn't isn't Rand a normal nickname for Randy or something? I mean, I don't know. Randy, Randy who wanted to be called Rand. No. <laughs> Elaine's a normal name, although it's not yes. spelled the way that it is. Yes. Yeah. Perrin is a normal name. I never met everyone, anyone named Perrin. But... Never heard of that name before ever. Me oh, if you had a kid, who? What name would you give them for real time? But none of the names are good. I mean, Avienda's a nice name. Yeah, it I is. Know, I don't like her very much. <laughs> I just like the idea of myself with here. only one kitty. <laughs> True. I would I would take Avienda and then Lan. Or not even no, that would be weird, because they're siblings. Mm. Yeah, that's what I got. I like okay, I like Logan. I like Logan. Like it's close enough to Logan, mm. but this- yeah, that's true. Yeah, Logan's nice. Nynaeve. I just don't like Nynaeve. I could never name a child Nynaeve because of Nynaeve as a person. <laughs> it's like, absolutely not. Okay, At she least has an easy nickname built in. You can do Eve as, you know. Mm-hmm. She was one of my top characters until she married Lan. And then, like, I feel like I said in the last live show how I liked that she was the only one who hadn't lost her personality over a guy. And then immediately at the beginning of this book, she lost her personality over a guy. I I mean, hopefully she'll get out of it because she is in the honeymoon phase right now. She started. She hasn't even gotten it out because she needs to share room with the other girls. (laughs) She's so sad. I mean, she started a little bit because she told Elaine like when I'm acting like an idiot you just need to tell me okay you need to slap me on it. <laughs> <She> <laughs> <at least laughs> it. 
<laughs> True. Okay. On that note, we'll leave it. <laughs> and we will see you all in, what did I say, June? For Winter's Art. Bye.